On this week's episode, we are going to talk about our third part of our series, which is... Common Resistances to Using Annuities with Retirees. There. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode. I am Chad Owen. This is my sidekick. You know what? I haven't introduced my sidekick. I just thought I was the star of the show. This is my thorn in my side, Caleb North. <laughs> <laughs> Placed here by God to keep Chad's ego in check. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. You know what? Out of honor, I'm not even going to say a rebuttal with that because <laughs> I like 15 different things I can say right now. Oh, I love you, Chad. I know you do. I'm a lot to, a lot to love. Yeah. 215 pounds of a lot to love. That's, so that's good. What are we talking about? You already said what we're talking I about. I did, but yeah, common resistances to using annuities with retirees. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got kind of got a few things outlined here, right? We're going to talk about brokers and financial mm-hmm. advisors mm-hmm. and their opinions and their advice to retirees mm-hmm. and kind of how to navigate that and handle that. Some, I've got three. Well, I'm of ready them, for this one. Yeah, three <laughs> of the more common uh, objections that clients give. And then we're going to talk about how to effectively position annuities with retirees, how you should be doing that. So, so is this like objection handling here? Or? Well, and there's there's three objections okay. that we'll handle for them. Okay. Um, but the, really the, the start of this don't is... Don't we have... We have like a major objection thing we just mm-hmm. did, right? We just launched it or we re- released it. So mm. if you want to see that, reach out to me. Yeah, don't just Video. an email. You just need an email address and a phone number and their contact information. We'll send it to them, right? Yeah. So how do we get that? So reach out to me. You can email me, Caleb North, C A L E B N O R T H, at retirementrealized.com. Yeah. Or call 512-798-3500, extension 5. Yeah, and for those who have been listening to us for a long time and they sent their email to us, I decided, I was on my vacation when this happened, and Caleb's talking about doing a PDF, and I'm like, you know what? That would be so hard to do a PDF. Why don't we just tame, take out time and record it? Mm-hmm. And that's what we did. Yeah. I, it's a long one, too. I can't it's remember. Hour and a half. Hour least. and a half, yeah. And it's, I, I wanted to swallow my shoe when I said that because like I was like. hundred something I, objections. Yeah, and I did. Yeah, when that <laughs> happened, I'm like, what did I just commit to? But you know what? And now it's done. And is it ready yet? Yeah, it's already been released. Already been set. Yeah, yeah so. It, it took a lot of extra time, but man, it's going to be so much easier to just have it where you can hear what's going mm-hmm. on versus trying to write it down. And people still may not understand by right. written, but they'll understand by voice fluctuation, tone, involvement, engagement, you know? Yeah. And it's, and it's good too, because most objections, it, the first thing comes out and then you handle it. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes there's something else that gets said. So I try to bring yeah. that element to it, yep. uh, the conversational side of things. And I did not so know what these objections it's true. were. They were, yep. they were random. Yep. They were submitted by agents, and we love them. But brokers and financial advisors' advice regarding Bookie, annuities. Bookies, you mean? Bookies. Bookies? <laughs> and I think it's a fair, it's a fair uh, disclaimer to make that we don't hate brokers or financial advisors. Nope. We love you guys. Yep. The thing that we don't love well, we is... we love most. We love most. The thing we don't love is when a piece of somebody's retirement that should be founded on guarantees gets placed into something that can be lost. Yeah. In Likely part to be or lost. in totality. I mean, at yeah. some time during your retirement, the market will fall. Right. I mean, that's just a fact. It goes up and it goes down. And when you're pulling money out while the market's falling and you're paying broker fees, that's why you just you know make sure you're doing safe money for what needs to be safe, and then whatever you want to gamble with, that's mm-hmm. fine. And that's not by any means meant to slam someone. It sure. is okay for someone to do what they want with their money, and if right. they're fine with a certain risk tolerance, once they have their safe money, then great, it's their money, yeah. their decision. Yeah. So. What's interesting to me is that you, as an insurance agent, mm-hmm. who I guess, yes, by by all legalities when you're dealing with ERISA funds you have to legally operate as a fiduciary yep. um, but you consistently tell clients this is your money yeah. this affects your retirement far more than it affects mine yep. but we don't always see that same mentality 
on the risk side of things. And I'm not saying there aren't great financial advisors or great brokers out there. There are, but it's just not as, it doesn't seem to me like that mentality is as present. It, there's so much conservation effort that mm -hmm. gets made when somebody's trying to move something that creates guarantees. Mm -hmm. And there's so much conservation that gets made to keep them in something that is risky. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, oh, and if you do your suitability there. right too, a lot of times when they call their broker, they'll say, you know what, that amount seems right. Now, sometimes I get a bigger percentage out. Why? Because they have a phenomenal income. Sure. They, you know, both of them, if one of them dies, it stays the same. So, you know, it just goes into how can you even remotely try and plan someone's income for life off of hypotheticals? Well, you can't. And, you can't. And you sum it up with clients in two questions is how long are you going to live? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. What's the stock market mm -hmm. going to do in five or 10 years? Nobody knows that. Yep. So and that's why I don't like it even when our own industry tries, tries to use straight indexed annuities to provide income for life. Sure. You I do, don't like that either. Just straight indexed annuity and then yeah. you just make withdrawals or whatever. Yeah, it's there's like, still no guarantees. I mean, you got your zero floor. Sure. But of loss. man, you just, oh, uh. yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's true. And, um, you know, I think often mo probably the majority of the time you're dealing with financial advisors and brokers that are going to lose fee based revenue yep. when clients move their money. In other words, the client is their annuity, <laughs> which you, and you say that I do. Yeah. Say you that. tell, you tell, I tell the client that all the time, your broker doesn't want you to move your money in or out of the market. Actually, they want you to stay in the market because you're their annuity. As long as you keep your money with them, they keep making the fees year after year, whether you're winning or losing. Mm -hmm. So do you want to be your broker's annuity or do you want to have your own, that guarantees income for his life? Or do you want to have your own annuity guarantees income for your life? Right. That's that always goes that very well. <laughs> Not for the, uh, <laughs> not for <laughs> not the broker, <laughs> but it always goes uh, very well. Well, and then you'll come across some client objections. And I put three down that I'll okay. shoot out to you and we can go through these three and then we'll talk about how to effectively position the annuity. But first one is I don't want my money tied up that long. So when you lose 50% in the market, is that money tied up? <laughs> no, it's it. gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's not you need there. It, it's, yeah. yeah, if you need it, it's not there. Or are you truly tying up your money? Now, I'm very straightforward with people. If you are ever thinking of surrendering this, mm -hmm. I will not write it for you. And I tell them exactly like that. I say, if you ever plan on surrendering this annuity, I'm not going to write this right now. If that's your intent to go in with surrendering it. But if an emergency came up outside of most policies, having a long-term care or terminal illness or death, where it's 100% liquid, and there's no surrender charge, but you do have accessibility to the money. Right. Now we're a 1010 state, so the highest surrender charge you have is 9%. So that's the worst. We are 20 plus percent down in every indice as of the timing of this podcast. One of them's over 30%. That is way higher than 9%. And you say, well, you can let it bounce back. Oh, so you're telling me this is guaranteed going to bounce back right now. When they need it, it's going to be bounced back. No. So you, you do right. have accessibility of your money. It's through a surrender, which do not do this if you're planning on surrender. Sure. But that's also why we make sure you have plenty of emergency funds and savings. Right. So when you look at that scenario right there, you go, okay, you don't, how can you say you don't have accessibility to your money? Right. You, you do. You it's, do. You just may not have 100% liquidity. Which you don't money. have that guarantee in the market either. Right. I mean, you're like you said, worst case scenario, I think, is 22% right now. Up to what? The Nasdaq's 30. Oh. You said that. I think it's, yeah, I said it's it. over 30%. It so is. it doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's a 30% surrender charge plus your broker's fees. I mean... Yeah, let's let's get real let's, with this one. Let's talk about surrender charges. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's let's talk about this. It is stinking tell me I have a surrender charge of mine when you just lost your client 30%. Right. That's that's just that's yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Um okay, well, you know, Chad, I could get better returns in the market. Oh, really? So we're 30% down and that's a better return in the market versus <laughs> zero in mine? Oh, wait, we have the one-year fixed strategy, which has 3.4% minus your rider fee. So you have guaranteed returns right now, number one. Number two, if that's the case, why'd you even reach out to me? 
If you think you can do better in the market, why did you reach out to me? Number three, if you think that's the case, why are we not dealing with $10 million right now instead of $300,000? Oh, because you don't know how to time the top or the bottom of the market. Neither does your broker that's charging you to have a little crystal ball and hypothesize or think or whatever I can time the market, which you can't. I could go on and on on that one. That's just three, right? Just boom. Don't tell me you can do better in the market. If that was the case, you would never reach out to me. Or your wife may do one of the two. <laughs> God, God, why do I get pressure. so riled up with, <laughs> when it comes to these stupid objections that you're just going, how can somebody even remotely say that right. and feel good about themselves? It just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, here's. I think you purposely pick the ones that get me riled up. Which is pretty much all of them. I mean, there's there's a lot of them that get me riled up because if you just stop and think about what you're saying, right, you wouldn't say that. True. From from 2000 to current, well, to 2021, I guess technically, the S and P 500, which is the benchmark mm -hmm. of managed accounts, has averaged 7.13 percent, including dividends. I'm not sure if that includes dividends or not. That would be not. important to know that. That would be important to know. Yeah. But I don't actually know if it does. That's a good question. <laughs> but it does also include broker fees. I don't remember when I crunched fees. those numbers. This was yeah. weeks ago yeah. that I was looking at this. But, yeah. but it doesn't include broker fees. You always want to see if they do or they don't include uh, dividends. But you also need to have like a little disclaimer that talks about this doesn't include broker fees right. in any way. Because broker fees can range. I mean, if you're in any sort of mutual funds uh, or, I mean, you could have broker fees including your fund fees of... Two, two and a half, three. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even saw one three and a half percent when they added the mutual funds into it. Yep. So you can have very, very high fees. That's true. And so it depends what the dividends are as well. But that being said, that means nothing when the market's really high right now. So that's through 2021. You redo that number now with the market being down 30% in the NASDAQ, 20 plus percent in the mm -hmm. S&P and the Dow. That changes those numbers. We drop another 30%. Oh, you made a whopping 3%. Since 2000, I need it. You know what? Put that in your notes. Figure out what inflation has been since 2000. Oh, I can tell you. Since 2000? Yep. Oh, well, there you go. Inflation history calculator. While you're pulling, or while I'm pulling this up, um, on, I will give me say, another stinking I, objection that's going to rile me. Well, up. it's not a, <laughs> it's not an objection. Um, what it is, though, is this concept of. That's the 7.13% that I gave. Mm -hmm. That was the S&P 500 as the benchmark of yeah. all managed accounts. But you take none of the loss and half the gain over that same period of time, you average a hair over 5.5%. And wasn't there a big... But uh, it ends up money ahead. Yeah, there's a big publication in the past 10 years that said 85% of certified financial planners and brokers can't even beat the S&P. And 85% don't even put their right. clients in the same funds they would have themselves. So if you could, if you could get the exact returns of the S&P 500 mm -hmm. for the last 21 years, 22 years, mm -hmm. you would average 7.13% each year. That's your annualized average. But you would be money behind if you had half those gains and none of the losses. And that 7.13% doesn't include any fees for managing. You know what? I want to go back to 2000 right now. And I want $100,000, and I want to know, I want to go do like that back to the future thing. Okay. You no, know, it'd be just back. And then I'll just pick from here on out from 2000. I would be easily the richest man in the entire world right now. If you had 100000 if you bought something mm -hmm. in 2000 mm -hmm. for $100,000, mm -hmm. it would today cost you 171 point. Nine thousand. That is a seventy-two percent cumulative rate of inflation, which is about a six, about six percent compounded rate of inflation. If I'm doing that right uh, in my head, not sure. That'd be yeah. that's a twenty-two year but still, period. Still, I mean, because generally, see, that's odd. That can't because well, I guess you could because if you took home prices, almost always would double every twenty years if you go back before two thousand. Actually, if you went, I think it was 2010, home prices would double about every, uh, every excuse me, every 20 years, mm -hmm. they would double. So, yeah, that's got to be over 6% compound inflation rate. Well, Which 70, I know technically that's not how they do that. But Well, if you have 70, you've got 72%, so divide that by 22, words, you've got a 
basically a what a three point three point three three point two seven percent each year. So it wouldn't be a six percent compounded. It'd be no three three and a half percent compounded will double your money in twenty years. Just like seven point two percent will double your money right. in ten years. So this would it's be shy more, of that. Oh, that's right. It's Seven, under that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. my brain. So, it, but yeah. but nonetheless, three yeah. ish percent compounded. Three. And that's where the market is, simple. right? That's inflation, right? That's inflation. So if you took what your money is actually, and that's posted, that's posted because I'm sure they're mm-hmm. not calculating. Like for example, gas still is way, way, way more than what it was before. Right. And so that's the yeah that's the official inflation yeah, the official rate inflation which is rate. man I need I egregiously I was like there's so many numbers I mean here's the thing I got to be cautious of this, cautious of this too I could numerically challenge anything mm-hmm. just by studying but the fact is is no matter what the numbers are there's no guarantees Right. And that's where the income writers come in with the guarantees. You can sum it up in a way that's more easily understood than having to go into the depth and yeah. detail of the fact that we've had a 72% cumulative inflation rate since t- 2000. Like that, you, <laughs> you lose clients so quick. Yeah. You can sum it up in ways that are easier to understand. I can, yeah. Um, but I, boy, my brain likes to go down. Oh, that road, I love though. it. It's fun. You I know, I nerdy. talked to someone recently about. They're very analytical, and he's a, he's very good at what he does, but he's very analytical as well. And I'm not. I'm more simplistic, but I fight that analytical side all the time. Like, mm-hmm. if I wanted to go toe-to-toe with anybody that wants to go analytics, let's do it. You'll, just, you'll fight but, them in their own fight. Yeah, fight them in their own fight. I mean, I when I was in Colorado, I used to have Ball Aerospace and Lockheed Martin right there, and these guys were brilliant, way smarter than me. But when it would come to analytics, I could go toe-to-toe all day long on that. And it would all come down to the one thing. You can't guarantee anything you're talking about. Yep. And I even had one guy, he had all this math equation up on the board. I said, sit down. And he looks at me like, what? I said, sit down. Everything you have up there is all hypothetical, right? And he goes, well, yeah. I said, so there's no guarantees on what you're doing. He's like, no. And I said, then how can you even try and calculate your income off of nothing you know? Right. And he sat down. (laughs) So There you go. Because it it goes in, when you sell by statistics, Mm -hmm. you you still, it's all speculative. Right. I mean, historically, it can be factual, but the future is still speculative. Yes. So we have to use the guarantees to where it takes that, those two questions, how long are you going to live for? Where's the stock market going to be tomorrow, mm-hmm. then five or 10 years from now? It takes, it answers those two questions. Absolutely. Yep. I have one more. I know we're going a little long today. I have one more objection, and then I've got a couple of notes to make about positioning annuities. Okay. But I've been with my financial advisor for 20 years. I used to have a purple minivan. Why? At that time, I had four kids. That was a vehicle we needed. Now I get to drive a big red pickup truck that I specifically pick the five-seater. I don't have a bench seat in the front. Why? I don't need that big of a seating area. I don't need seven or eight seats when we had we had the excursion, which had eight seats seating capacity. I don't need that anymore. So there's a time based off of your season, based right. off of where you're driving. I mean, I could take my truck pretty much anywhere. But there's a time in life where I don't want to take that risk. Now, I'll always have a big truck, but there's times where people go, you know what, I'm driving around the city. I don't want to have a big vehicle anymore. Why? The vehicle changes. Mm -hmm. So there's a time where you have your same broker for year after year, but they don't specialize in what you need in the future. And most elderly people will understand this. When I say elderly, I'm talking about people getting 45 and over. You used to always go and see a general... Can I get that in writing? 45 and older is it's elderly? Older. It's elderly. Elderly. You fall into God, that man, category. God, man, I'm in deep trouble because my wife's in that category too. Yeah. So, but the point is you could get away seeing a general practitioner. Sure. Once you get to a certain age, it's no longer about general practitioner. You need to see specialists. So your broker is a general practitioner. Your safe money person is a specialist. And that's who you're going to see. That's why you. don't they have, why do they have specialists? Because it's impossible for any human, a general practitioner, to understand everything and be an expert in that area, in that part of the body. Yeah. It's the same thing in the financial world. I know a lot of very brilliant brokers. Yeah. But when it comes to the simplicity of safe money, they, they, they short circuit. Right. So. Well, I think, 
I, I made a I made a post on social media. This was, I mean, probably two months ago. I don't. Mm. It was a while back. But basically, I said. Agents need to be two things. They need to be good leaders and they need to be good educators. Mm-hmm. A, a good leader is somebody that confidently uh, and with authority mm-hmm. serves the people they're leading, mm-hmm. right? But the confidence and the authority was an important piece to that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a good educator takes a complex or seemingly complex subject and simplifies it in, in a way that can be easily understood. If By it, anybody. Right. Yep. If agents will do those two things and do those things well, it the production takes care of itself. You know, that book that I wrote, Stress and Rocking Chairs, one of the greatest compliments I ever get is it was so easy to mm-hmm. understand. Right. That, I mean, where a lot of people would be going, oh, that was so complicated. You're so smart. You're brilliant in what you do. No, it was easy for me to understand. Yeah. By the way, we do have those back in stock. We do. So go to stressandrockingchairs.com. Order your books. We do bulk. Uh, I think it's fit, 50 is the minimum order for bulk. But you know what? Don't wait till we can't get those anymore. Yep. You know, it's we because we obviously protect my book supply first, but we have enough to give out to agents to, to where they can get them and hand them out to their clients. So, so real quick, the annuity, real quick. I will make it real quick. The annuity is merely the solution to a problem. Yep. Um, th- the same as a Band-Aid for a cut. People don't go to the store to buy a Band-Aid because they don't have a cut and they think Band-Aids are cool. Mm -hmm. They go to the store to buy Band-Aids because they have a cut that they need protected and healed. Mm -hmm. It's like the annuity is the same way. They're not buying the Band-Aid because of the Band-Aid. They're buying the Band-Aid for the result that they get from it, and the same goes for annuities. So don't sell the product. It's the solution. It's the benefit that they get from it. For sure. Uh, And then the last one. Or the second piece here is that clients have hundreds of options Mm -hmm. for both annuity products Mm -hmm. and annuity agents. Mm -hmm. If you, as the seemingly or supposed expert, go in and just lay out three different options for them, you're not really doing them any favors. You've maybe narrowed it down, but ultimately you're not making your recommendation, and that's what they're looking for is an expert that's willing to make a recommendation. It's a cheap way to make a client make a decision so you have no accountability. Mm -hmm. If you're an expert, act like an expert and tell them this is the best product for their situation. Yeah, and actually do the research to know that it either is is. or it isn't, and if it isn't, don't sell it and find the one that is because there is one. (laughs) Yep. Okay, well, that's it, guys. I hope you have a happy whatever we're actually getting pretty close to Thanksgiving, but we're yeah, not there yet. Not quite. But just have happy selling. Yeah. We'll just talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye.